You know, while most of us go about our daily lives today, it's estimated 18 veterans will kill themselves. Many soldiers returning from Iraq and Afghanistan feel they must hide their deepest wounds to save their careers. But one Marine is putting it all out there in the hopes of helping himself and others. Ten of your side, Stephanie Harris joins us now with his very public battle and what the government is doing to help all veterans. Stephanie? Nicole Alvita, Jason Haig started this blog here. It's called USM Crazy. It is raw and it is very real. I sat down with him to talk about the post-traumatic stress disorder and how to stop it. Get the, get the story. A Marine never wears his heart on his sleeve. But when Jason Haig rips off his shirt... The boots, the dog tag, and the rifle... His emotions are undeniable. This is Arlington Cemetery in the back, and uh, this is the wife. This is the picture you'll see on his blog, where he exposes the truth about post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, I was always, you know, the first one at the party, the loudest one at the party, and always wanted to go out, be around, and now I'd, I don't leave my basement. He blogs about the anxiety that keeps him from even going to his children's football games. In the time, he felt cornered at a restaurant and ran to the car for his gun. I will be honest, I've carried a weapon uh, most of the time until, like, right now when they took it away from me. So, yeah, I, my dad took my pistols. Haig's unit fought in some of the fiercest battles of the Iraq War. The day we watched the fall of Baghdad, he got shot. Today marks a day in my life that will not only be benched in my mind forever, but countless other Marines and families. He blogged about it and the two IED explosions that caused traumatic brain injury and left him deaf in one ear. But it's the scars you can't see that keep him up for days on end. He has killed not once, but a thousand times. You are gone, but seen every night. The nightmares nearly destroyed his family until he got this wake-up call. My wife punching me damn near in the face. Her telling me that it's either me or the Marine Corps. It took eight years, and when he finally went to the VA clinic for help, listen to what happened. Like they told me to come back, like, next week. Unacceptable, says Senator Mark Warner. The sooner we get these veterans into treatment, uh, the less number of suicides, the less number of broken lives we're going to have to experience. The Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs held a hearing last month after an inspector general's report showed VA facilities were not providing care as quickly as they said. The department claimed 95 percent of first-time patients received an evaluation within 14 days. In reality, Fewer than half were seen in that time. In response, veterans' hospitals are making changes, hiring 1,600 new mental health professionals, studying the use of transcendental meditation on returning troops. And this week, experts are debating whether to change the name, swapping the word disorder for injury. Some feel that will reduce the stigma. All proof, Warner says, they are moving forward. But they have to move quicker as well, and those of us in... in public office need to keep the pressure on. Pressure to provide quick treatment to veterans who seek it. Haig believes that would help, but insists there's only one way to beat the stigma. There needs to be a colonel or a general, somebody that comes out and says, I have PTSD. That's what, it'll, that's what it's going to take. Had that mentor existed, Haig may have sought help sooner and saved his career. Maybe, just maybe, I could have done it right the next time. Instead, He's leaving the Marines, but still doesn't know when he'll be able to leave his basement. I'm waiting. Just wait to see, I guess, what's going to happen. Now, the Department of Veterans Affairs did announce that our region, the Mid-Atlantic Health Care Network, will receive 77 of those new health care workers. Now, we have put a link to Jason Haig's blog on our website, wavy.com. But we do want to warn parents that the language here is very raw. We also encourage you to share your own experiences and comments on our Wavy Facebook page. We'll share some of them with you in just about half an hour. Stephanie Harris, 10 on your side. Over the years, many people have helped Captain Haig, and now he wants to give back. So he's holding a fundraiser. All of the proceeds will go to the Semper Fee Fund, Canines for Warriors, and the Wounded Warrior Programs. And if you'd like to participate, we set up a link to the Life After War website on Wavy.com. All you have to do is click on this story.